That was hard. <laughs> good one. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to... Where are we? Our kind of homestead. Yay. Where are we? We don't know anymore. We're trying to cram in like five po- podcasts in the matter of one day. And That's it's why we're still in the same shirts very, that we were last very, week. Very, very, very difficult. Much more than you'd realize because of all the kids. Dynamics, people. And it's... It's a yeah, it's been, it's been like, wild. Can you help people. me though? Like, wild. sit up straight. I was like, looking Shana, back I always at tell all you the videos. No, back. all like the videos of me, like, I like always like, and I don't know why I do this thing, but it's like I have like 15 chins and I'm always like laughing. I'm like, ha ha, like, it's awful. It's the, it's the most unpleasant thing to look at. So, like, help me not look like, I don't know. 15 chitty. <laughs> it's like, there was, I was like, how? I was you like, you do not look at 15 chins. Yes, oh my I god. Did. And there's like even a, one, of the, one of the uh, YouTube ones, it was like the still of me is that, of like the one in the beginning, you know? It's just that. I was just like, okay. <laughs> oh my god, you're hilarious. <laughs> it's not cute. I would not recommend. Um, yeah. You were hysterical. Okay, so I, I don't know what I'm doing. So we yeah, okay, so we're doing should. our Q and A today. Oh, um, there we, we go. had some questions Q&A. come in. We didn't have a lot of questions, but we had a few questions. Um, we thought we were loved a little bit more. <laughs> we're like Q and A, shoot us your questions. Yeah. We're like we that, have that way how we many can, thousands of listeners uh, do we have? I know we can. No, no, no. We can answer questions oh, that you right guys now. want to know, <laughs> yeah. and then we're all like. I think we have five questions. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, six. We're like, we'll, you know, go through. We'll pick out our 10 favorite. (laughs) That's all we add, people. So thanks for the love. For those of you that did send questions, everybody else, you're dead to us. (laughs) (laughs) Dead. You're dead to us. Um, So it doesn't matter. Go for the first question. I want to know, though. It's fine. So we have a lot of listeners, people. There's like 35,000 of you or more. But we got okay. Six. So you got three melons. You got that's three what melons. Felt, that's like, what we felt like. I feel like we had three questions. And there's five, but still no six. Lame. Six questions. Six. Two, okay. Three. So from what the fuck? joy? Joy. Sorry, I almost said what thank the fuck you, is her name? Joy. Yes. Thank you, Joy. We, we appreciate, appreciate you. you. Not that we don't appreciate you all, but no, nope, maybe we turn don't. in some questions and we, we appreciate don't you don't more appreciate next you. time. <laughs> so um, Joy um, reached out and was asking about cloth diapers and. If we use them, what would our tips be if we did use them? And what are basically just our thoughts on them? So, no, never used them. Basically, short answer. Long answer is I looked into using them with the latest baby, Hero, um, because I do not like diapers for lots of different reasons. You know, diapers test on animals. So fucking weird. How? How? How are they testing animals? No idea. I hate that, though. Okay, so. <laughs> An image of lots of little animals wearing diapers i know and like i guess they take the stuff that's inside the diaper and like what inject into their fucking eyeballs like what they, do you do they usually force them to eat it yeah they usually force things to eat like all that stuff that's inside the diaper they'll like just pump it into their stomachs you know and, until it do you kills think them. it's going to live though a- anything well because they want to be like well if they if your baby accidentally consumes 45 diapers it might die <laughs> <You're> like- <laughs> Good to know, Captain. <laughs> You're just like, what the fuck? Like, leave the beagles alone. Let the leave monkeys the go. Beagles okay? Alone. Leave them alone. Yeah. No yeah. one ever need, is going to eat 45 diapers. I'm assuming it's not going to happen. Or maybe even whole, no one is, if, if, like, not even one whole diaper. I mean, maybe the stuffing comes out. Diaper? You eat a tiny, itty bitty bit. You're fine. Yeah. Newsflash. It's like, yeah. God damn. So anyways, I don't like animal testing. I just don't like diapers as a whole. They don't biodegrade, obviously. Very, very gross. And so I did look into cloth diapers. Okay. What I found was that my life is much too chaotic and I'm always on the go to use cloth diapers. And I was like, how do moms that are on the go do it? Are there moms like me who have like a million kids and a million different activities? We're always out of the house. We like car school. You know what I mean? It's like you're schooling in your car because... I'm more in my car than I am at home. So it's like, can this coexist? Can I Can I do this? The answer was no. Like, for me, I was like, oh, fuck. No fucking way. Because it was right before Disneyland, uh, right? That was our big trip. Uh, Hero was only a month old. And I was yeah. like, what the fuck do I do in Disneyland? Like, I just have a bunch of poopy. Where do I clean those out? Like, in the sink? It's like, so, like... At, so I do appreciate the whole concept and idea behind cloth diapers like a lot. But, and I probably could have used them for my first two. For your first two, yeah. You know what I mean? Because like, 
You just have, you have two kids. What do you got? Three melons? Like, you got three melons? <laughs> you, got, you got two kids. It's I, easy. You're not doing anything. I thought of using them, especially if when you have like, and that's, you're just home a lot because you just have your babies. You just have your babies. I thought yeah. about using them with River because it's just like, I, I didn't even think about it with Ronan. And then when I had River, I was like, I should use cloth diapers. Like they're better for the environment and everything else. But then, um, I never like voiced that opinion. And then I just got so many diapers from everybody. And then you're like, okay, then well, I'm like, in it. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, oh, I'm just using diapers. And then I just never switched over. Because I even was like, oh, I'll switch over. Because I even had, I had them. Like I had mm. the actual cloth diapers. And I was like, I'm going to use these. Going to do it. And then I just and never. And so you have like the cloth, right, that goes over. Like, like the cute part that goes over the actual piece of cloth that they actually go like poop and pee in. And so it's that portion that I was like, okay, I'm out. Let's just, this is like a, you know, a normal day for me, you know. Okay, you're out. You're at home. Baby uses, like, how many do I even need? Baby uses this many during the morning and during the afternoon. Then we're out the rest of the day. We're in the car. Where do these things go? I mean, you definitely you know, not. And a, then, like, where do you wash them out at? Where do I wash them out? Or they, or they just sit poopy in, in my in my trunk? I mean, that's going to smell terrible. It doesn't matter if you put it no, in a I plastic bag. No, I think cloth bag. diapers are for at-home mommies that are at home. And I, I did do some research because I was like, you know, there has to be people that they go on vacation, right? Or do you just never go on vacation? Because I was looking thinking about Disneyland. And, yeah, they were like, I just bring extra. I wash them out in the sink. I'm just like. At the hotel? Wow. Okay. That's <laughs> noted. <laughs> <laughs> you like go to your hotel sink. It's like, you know, spray, spray, spray. <laughs> you're just like, you're just like. I don't know. I was like, okay, this is this isn't for me. I just can't even imagine. I mean, I can barely get a, a normal diaper on my baby sometimes. Ver, you know, let alone like yeah, a fucking cloth yeah, diaper. It's it just now. Don't get me wrong. I know we always say convenience is, is going to be what kills us all. Probably true, but for me, I'm sorry. It's just not one of the fish I'm going to fry. And but you that did just do all research their... into good diapers. I did do research because again, I do not like animal testing. Yeah, I don't like the there. There's diapers are weird. It's like all this shit they put on yeah. them. It's, it's bizarre. So I did do research into like, a very good a diaper that will decompose. They're not tested on animals. I came up with two brands. So it's Honest Company diapers, and that was L- Mo- Luna Moon Moon mm-hmm, Luna Moon Luna Moon, and both of those. Really, like, they're great. Now, the Luna Moon didn't really fit Hero well. I know that sounds really weird, but, yeah. like, it, it they just don't fit her body shape. I, she's, like, she's shaped like a ball. <laughs> just, like, they just don't fit her. And, um, and like, her legs. They were I don't for know, small, it, organic babies. They were very, very small, organic babies. Not that my baby's not organic, I say, to a certain point. But, like, yeah, she's definitely. And I guess she is small for her age, for sure. But she's fat. And, like, yeah, yeah they just, they're not for her. Next time I'm going to get some beach balls and test her diapers. Yeah, out literally. Beach balls. Be like, and oh, I do love. A beach ball. A beach ball, yeah. I do love the Honest brand. And their wipes are, oh, my God, I love their wipes. Just so thick. But they're not, like, overly and again, saturated they're like, water. And then they're not, like, um, bleached and all this other weird so stuff. Gross. Yeah. yeah, so gross. So I do worry about that kind of stuff, for sure. And that's why I did go down the idea of the cloth diapers. It's just not for me. So this was kind of getting the Honest brand brand wipes and diapers was like my like okay compromise it's a compromise and I'm I'm good with that they're very they're pretty costly obviously obviously and it's unfortunate because it's like it's Where fucking cloth sucks diapers you save a lot of money so you have to like yeah gotta, there's think there's about pros your and cons of each. lifestyle well, and what means the most to you I what, suppose like if what this, you're willing to forgo yeah. and, and, and what maybe, you're absolutely not willing to forgo and then maybe if you're like no I can I am at home I'm gonna be at home like I'm only gonna yeah. have that one baby or I don't have any other kids we don't have to go all the places right now um and then maybe what, when you go on vacations then grab some of the honest diapers so you don't have to worry about washing poopy diapers in hotel sinks yeah, that, that to me would be a, yeah. But, so yeah. So, Joy, I think that was a really good question. It was though, a great question. And I appreciate, we appreciate it. that. Yes. Um, and let us know when you have kids what you decide to do. Yes. Um, and then, uh, yeah. So, thank you for that. Uh, the next one is from Victoria. Thank you, Victoria, for sending in a question. Yes, always. And, Victoria, um, you're amazing, by the way. I, I know, absolutely Victoria's- like... You're like our person and she's our we love YouTube you. gal. She is our she's YouTube our gal. YouTube. So Victoria is like an avid listener, watcher, whatever, and she is constantly engaging engaging us, constantly um 
asking questions and commenting on our YouTube videos. And we, I so appreciate the, you know, the, there's like this person out there that's like, yeah, I'm engaging you and yeah, I'm here. A real and life person. And she'll be like, Hi. I really appreciate this. Episode. Like all yes, the time. Yes, just and you're so just sweet. Like, Thank you. And she's amazing. Like, we love you. Yeah. Absolutely love you. Yeah, so thank and you. I love, and I'm really sorry if sometimes I won't like, I won't like like or even like whatever your comment for like, more over like weeks you know I'm like oh fuck like I gotta get on there so that is not because I don't want to it's just because it slips my mind and all the other mayhem of my life you get know your just, life together Sherry. I'm sorry Jesus. I know I know um so Victoria asked uh the babies and toddlers on a homestead like basically like you know the do's and don'ts thoughts suggestions how to keep them safe especially on a like a newer homestead or like an off-grid homestead so um we talked about this briefly i believe but um so if you're and I, this has actually come up a couple times people have asked this through different avenues but um people are always concerned with like how do kids know that certain things are dangerous right like um not to stick their hand in like a dark hole because like a black widow could be in there yeah. or like, like uh, or poisonous snakes. Yeah. Like how do they know the difference between a poison snake and a not poison snake? Well, they, they usually, if they're young, they don't. So the, the best thing to do is just teach them regardless of what it is to ask the parent if they can like, you know, baby signs or talking or whatever. Like, oh, is this animal safe? Don't like pick up anything until you ask if yeah. you can hold it, even bugs. We always have told our kids, like, ask if you can hold it first. Ask, you know, don't just approach anything. Like, it could be sting, it could bite. Um, you know, and even that sucks as for a little kid, right? A sting and a bite. I have a pokey in my... And then, like, Ooh. other things, like, like so we had, for many years, we had Nubian bucks on our property. They weren't aggressive, but they were just very, very big animals. And they would just, like, kind of pin you to the fence out of love. <laughs> And so I, I do that as well. Yeah, when no, they I love would. Somebody, they would, they would pin you down. Like, I love you. Squishing you, and it could be really dangerous if, if the person that was being pinned was small. And so, like our kids, my, my kids and Shauna's kids, they just knew like okay, they just can't go into those pens. And they could go up and pet the pet the goats. There was pens they can go in, but there's pens they can't go in. So I think it's just a just a matter of just communicating. We're huge on communicating with our kids. We've always we always talk about that, and so. It just like yeah, you just fucking tell them, and you kind of keep reiterating it, and be like, yeah, that that guy's not, yeah, he'll probably get that fence. Don't like, go in there. I like you know how some parents they keep their kids away from things, and it usually has like because they're trying to protect them, and then it usually doesn't help by keeping like. P- They'll be like, I don't want to give my kids peanuts because then they might be allergic to them. Well, you're definitely going to give them an allergy if you're not going to give them peanuts, you know? Well, and like, you can make them, like, keeping them away from, like, a pool or water, for example, yeah. is going to make them afraid of a pool not, and water. Or not just afraid, but then they're going to be like, well, I'm going to go look at this when mom's not looking. And then yes. they're definitely going to drown. Yes. And so, so for the is, do's and the don'ts, I would absolutely, like... Do not keep them away from anything. No, from anything. like, just like, get them out there with you just immerse them just like you're immersing yourself and you yeah. go along you're like oh no no don't touch that or oh yeah be careful on that because it, see what's going to happen if you do that and this piece comes down it's going to smack your hand or whatever the case may be like obviously like 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 with trailers and big like pieces of machinery obviously those you have to be very cautious around and so i don't know just you just got to give your kids the do's and the don'ts you know and just open the lines of communication and don't ever and and one thing, like, your kids should always feel good and comfortable asking questions, and that's what's going to help them most, probably, too. Absolutely. So if you're, like, um, frustrated answering questions because you're busy out there in the garden, and they're like, hey, mom, what's this? Hey, mom. And you're like, oh, my God, like, go sit in the fucking corner. Like, then they're not going to want to ask you more questions and be curious or be safe. So, like, try as much as it can be difficult sometimes. Try to keep those communication lines open and – um fun I guess. because your kids will not always be asking questions by the way one day they will be older and they won't come to you anymore like they will have other people they're asking other other mentors obviously fucking google and so you're not going to be like the center of their world so appreciate being in the center of their world and i think kids that kind of grow up on a homestead even um off or especially off grid and stuff like that they have like a different way that they look at life and they are kind of like they gain that um, common sense a lot sooner. And I don't think people give them enough credit. Like 
when you think about it from an outsider's perspective or be like, oh, I don't know how, like, I'm worried raising kids because of all these dangerous things about stuff like that. Like, they really learn common sense rather quickly because they I kind mean, of... super quick, yeah. Because you kind of have to, right? Yeah. And they're seeing kids you do Kids are all, really fucking smart, by the they way. They are. They're fucking brilliant. And, 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 and they're... incredibly smart. And, again, not, give, not given nearly enough credit for as intelligent as they can be. And you just got to let them kind of... And the other thing is... They're going to have to have experiences to learn and to gain wisdom. So let them climb that tree. Hopefully they don't fall from too far of a height. You know, like, it's it's most likely never going to end, like, terribly. Yeah, are they going to fall? Yeah, of course they're going to fall sometimes. And are they going to get bit by some little bug? Well, most likely, yes. Like, I mean, if it, and for example, in all of the 25, 26, whatever, 27 years we've been here, not one of us has been bitten by a rattlesnake. For example, we have rattlesnakes. Better knock on some fucking wood. They're freaking, yep, boop, 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 got it. You know what I mean? We have rattlesnakes, but it's just like, it's just, again, because because everyone is cautious, because we only walk down the pathways when our grass is tall, and because my Common husband. Common sense again. My husband and the alpacas, they keep the, when we do have tall weeds, they get it down pretty quick. And again, this is all just kind of common sense stuff and then taking precautions too. Like, we get the weeds down because we don't want there to be tall weeds and the kids, you know, tromping through and then being like, oh, fuck, it's up in a rattlesnake. Just one of the many reasons. And then ticks and everything else. So, yeah. There's there's quite a bit that goes into it. I but. think there's, and I think there's less dangers on a home, in a homestead environment than there would be in, like, a city environment. So, if you look at it from that way, too. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. that it's way safer to raise your kids on a homestead than it would be, like, like my kids in the don't middle worry of a city. about cars, for example, which yeah. is huge. You know, they don't worry about cars. They don't really. Wor- they don't worry about strangers because we don't have strangers around us. And if we do, my dogs will probably eat them. You know, like and so, so there's there's a lot of. Oh, I guess it's not. I don't want to. I guess we shouldn't say safer. It's just different things that you have to worry about. But it's still like you know you still obviously need to be there and telling your kids what is dangerous and what is not just like you would anywhere else right and showing them and you know they figure it out really quickly and um it just gives them and it gives them so much space to where they can go off and run around and play and use their imagination like it's just an incredible experience even to watch incredible way to grow up you know absolutely incredible yeah very very cool highly recommend (laughs) Um, 10 out of 10 so yeah, so thank you, Victoria. For, hopefully, we answered your question thoroughly. Yes. Um, and anybody that asked a question, or the six of you, um, if we don't answer it completely, you can always like we're not going to be offended if you are like come back and be like, well, what about this or what about that or can you tell me more about this? Like, okay, like yeah, exactly. We're not like we don't care. Yeah. Um, Judy was our next one. Thank you for your question, Judy. Thank you so much. And um, what's your favorite thing to plant? I like this question, Judy. You know why? Because it was simple. And, um, you know, I love telling people I love to plant fucking pumpkins. I love them. (laughs) You do love pumpkins. I love pumpkins. I am like that typical white American. Yeah. Yeah. I love fucking pumpkins. Like m- Americans go batshit crazy for See, pumpkins. See, I'm not a, I'm not a huge pumpkin fan. They're t- they're cute and like the tiny ones can be super cute, cute little tiny gourds. That's adorable. But like pumpkins are overall, I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to get all like super jazzed about it like it's a fucking pumpkin. I love them. I love pumpkin pie. I love all the pumpkins. Yeah. All the I, different. I want all the shapes and it's like fucking chicken eggs. I want all the shapes, sizes, colors, all of them. I yeah. Wanna, like, eventually not, I want to grow all of them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I'm just like, eh, I mean, they're cool, but I'm not. I don't know what I like to plant. Probably just tomatoes. I love tomatoes. Again, I love all the varieties, too. Like, it's so much fun. You know, that is really cool, though, like planting different varieties of tomatoes. I never know what I have. It's like little surprises all the time. Yeah, Because I so never cool. remember yeah. what variety I had or have or where I planted what. Yeah, yeah. Like, no. I even try to put little things in the ground, but they don't. Eh, eh. Anyways. But it is really cool to, if you ever did like a tomato tasting anywhere. Yeah. Like our, we oh went on a. I want a tomato tasting. We See, I would much rather go tomato tasting than wine tasting. Right? Oh, wine gives me headaches. Tomatoes don't. Tomatoes. Oh my God. I love so good, good. tomatoes. Especially like, just like, ah, oh, just fresh. We went to this so good. before I w- even had kids. So it was more than a decade ago. Um, 
we went to like a bed and breakfast, my husband and I, for our anniversary, and it was this little bed and be- breakfast in like Santa Cruz area, and it oh, was so I fucking cute. That. And like the first thing, like when we got there to like check in or whatever, like she comes out and she has all these tomatoes, different varieties on a plate. She's like, "Do you want to taste different tomatoes?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, I want to taste different tomatoes." The person I just met, like, <laughs> it was just like seriously, like, give me that fork. <laughs> like I didn't even like introduce, like we didn't even. It was nothing. It was just she came out with the plate. Yes, I want your fucking tomatoes. Like, who's a psychopath now? But yeah, yeah it was, it was I, great. And we and there were so many. Oh, so fucking good. I was like, this is my kind of bed and breakfast. Like, bring me plates of different things all the time. We'll be friends. We'll be friends. We're going to um, Cabo San Lucas for our sister's wedding. She's going to do like a destination wedding because she wants it to be small. And that's how you do it. And... Uh, we, I, I'm so excited. I was just thinking about plates of things and plates delicious things. Things. I was just, like, why is she talking about no, this? No, I'm so excited. Plates you just lay with the pool. All they, they come over to you. And they're like, do you want they're some like, food? Do you, you want like, some food um, uh, out of any of our restaurants? Like- and you're like, the answer is always going <laughs> yeah, to be yes. You never have to I'm, ask I'm just if so I want excited. something. I'm you can so just fucking keep bringing excited. me stuff. I told Sherry, I was like, the only thing I'm packing is like moo's. That's all I'm wearing. My fat pants. I'm wearing, I'm <laughs> only bringing my fat pants. Like moo's, anything right. that I can wear where you won't, because I don't, I don't want to be uncomfortable at no all. I want to eat all the bikinis, things. Okay? I'm definitely going to try to. I'm going to some of my moo Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna be fantastic. You know, very carefree. Yes. Oh, um, God. It's I told Shanley I to her wedding, looking. wearing a moo moo. You know? Yeah. Not wear a moo moo. Yeah. Yeah. Wear it. Wear Eat it. it. Eat it. <laughs> Eat the moo moo. <laughs> I'm just so happy, like, just so looking, we have, like, it's not until next November, so we have a bit, but I'm already, like, you know, like, fucking counter, counting off the days, like, my fucking kids do for Christmas. I, know. I mean, I I'm just like, so I'm excited. I'm trying to lose weight just so I can gain it back I'm there. so excited. Cause I'm I, thrilled. I'm so excited. I'm so fucking and thrilled. Because I just, it's such a relaxing, there's all-inclusive resorts, in case you've never been, absolutely amazing because you just pay a flat fee up front and then it's like all your food and drinks are included now there's some like shitty ones but you can get it some really good ones the place we're going is really good very worth it and it's just magical they have all these wonderful restaurants the food is just like to die for 10 out of 10 all you know absolutely amazing you're right in the beach and it's just like so fucking magical you don't have to do anything for seven whole days people bring you food you don't have to do you do not have to wash one single fucking dish that is that is exciting. You don't no, there's no cleaning. You don't have to do any cleaning for seven days. Magic, Shauna. It is magic. I'm just like, oh my god, I cannot wait. I want it to be tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, goodbye, we're leaving. <laughs> um yeah, so cool. So uh, I I like planning a lot of things. Like I'm I love my garden in general, but I do get a certain amount of joy from pumpkins for some reason. Um, I don't know why. I just very much enjoy. I love even watching the vines like sprawl out. I that love everything very, very about. Cute. Yeah, it's very. It's cute. very satisfying to yeah. me. But I get a lot of satisfaction from growing anything. I know. So. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So Judy, I don't know if you're asking because you're like breaking in a garden. You want to know what's fun to plant, but I just say plant a bunch of shit that you like and then go from there. Because yeah, for sure. You never know what's gonna. Tickle your fancy. I was going to say tickle your fancy. Then I was trying to think of something else. Yeah, because it sounds kind of creepy and weird. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I thought it though. (laughs) Committed. Uh, Okay, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah, for your question. You're the only Sarah here, so no need for a last initial, just in case you're like, well, do they mean me? We mean you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You're you. you. Um, How long does a homestead take to get started? This one was a good one. Or have. Or how long does it take to have an est- and how long it takes to have an established homestead? So, like, I guess it really depends on what your what the what the end goal of your homestead is. I think um, for an established homestead, you want at least five years. Well, at least, and maybe even longer if you're talking about like like it depends on what you're doing. Like, it are you running like a cattle doing, operation? Are you but running? Like, you but know, I'm like, saying to kind of feel like kind of get in the groove. That's what I'm thinking. Like, not like I have things, but like. I feel confident in my ability. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know if that what she, is that is that what you meant? I okay, don't know. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Like I, I feel you, confident I you. like 5 years probably and obviously you're constantly learning like Sherry and I have been doing this for fucking our whole lives and it's still like you you're constantly learning and growing and changing your mind and being like oh well you learned it this way but there's this other new way now that's just, it's just like everything like eggs are good for you eggs are bad for you eggs are good for you you know like it's like <laughs> you know what I'm saying like it's like who, who had everyone convinced eggs are bad for them though that is so funny to me I, it's like super funny 
<laughs> it's like this super, I, this, it basically goes super food and they're like, it's like, bad for you. Believe us. I, because of like, close. anyways, I think because things are constantly, we're constantly learning new things and we only know what we know right now, right? And then that can change in a few years. And so it's not like, anyways, it, it's, it does take time to be established, but once you're like, I know things, then that yeah. Can and all once you're change. comfortable in your knowledge, like once you're comfortable to like explain things to other people and like explain it to someone who's like, oh, how do you do that? And you're explaining Give it. Then advice. You're you're good, right? You're like good. you can consider yourself yeah. like. But then you're constantly relearning and any it's never, adding things. It's you never know? ending, but it, I think five. I think five years. Yeah, I would say, I would say five years. I I like that. But how to like. Like what was the what was the beginning of that question? I'm sorry. She just said, "How long does it take?" So you answered it. Yeah, about five years. Does a homestead take to get? Oh no, to get oh, started. To get started. Okay, yes. so this I think is a difficult question to answer. Again, I it because it depends on your homestead. It depends on the uh, size of your homestead specifically. And what's your idea of like? I have my because like you can start your homestead today. You know, make some bread. You did it. <laughs> like what? Like what's, I planted a tomato plant. Like, you know, it's like it's like what's your perspective? I suppose it's like are is, do you mean by homestead started? Like do you mean like okay, I want the goat area done, and we, I want goats. And I want the chicken area done. I want chickens. I want the garden all completely in. Like that's gonna obviously take a little a little bit. Probably not five years. I mean, but it could take five years. I mean, I don't know. And again, it depends on how much, how many funds you have to go into all these said I different activities. I think if you're like, activities. I have all this money that we save to buy a property and a house. And and then you want to have like, to start your homestead. I think it would take like a year to get started. If like getting your chickens and fencing and everything up and running it probably about a year. And then to feel like established like five years, if that's like. Yeah, I like it. That's good. I like it too. I, I, like I it had too. nothing. I was just like, I mean, I don't know. It depends on what you got. It, what it do you does got? depend on a lot. But, and it really depends on your perspective. Like if you start your home, you can start your homestead right now in this hour. You know, you make something, plant something, you did it. But um, to really like if to start an actual like I have a home and property and, and I have a stead. What a, and I a have stead. a home and a stead. And then, yeah. you know, building your barns or putting up your solar panels or putting in your garden, that's going to take like a year really for everything. And then you know, five years for, for sure to have like an established garden or to have like to get a good, oh, I have these chickens. I need these many hens to get this many eggs and just like constant like, you know, oh, I have. Additions and. Yeah, we had these goats and changes. now we want. Yeah, so yeah. it's just definitely I think that's a good time frame, a year to really get started, five years to get established. But that could vary depending on how big, how big are your goals? <laughs> And how much money do you have? And how much money do you have? Because that, that basically is like how much money you have is going to make a huge, you know, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Obviously. And you can always obviously start. Starting small is never a bad thing. It's actually, we highly suggest it. So don't feel bad if you have to start to pare down, start really small. You know, you got. Most people do start small. We started small, you know, and then it just grew from there like a fucking balloon and if but. you're interested in homesteading you probably already do a lot of homesteady things and you don't even realize it so you're probably not even giving yourself enough credit even now so right um, yeah exactly so think about that too like you know you're you're listening to stuff obviously you're you know trying to find information but you probably already do some things that most people don't do in their normal lives so just keep building off of that i guess is my point yeah for sure so um but yeah thank you that was from sarah thank you sarah that was from that's sarah. a good question um, our next one is from Jamie. Jamie. She, or I guess Jamie could be a boy. Is that a boy could spelling? Be. A girl spelling? I don't know if it's based on spelling, is it? Uh, I thought it was. Anyways. How do you spell the girl version? I don't know. Or the boy version? Don't know. So if you don't know, then how do you know? I don't know. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> it, folks. That. Anyways, Jamie, <laughs> thank you for your question. I guess it doesn't matter what gender you are. Um, it, they said, what's <laughs> the difference... <laughs> Between homeschooling and unschooling. And so those of you that have listened to us, we talked about homeschooling. And then if you have listened to a lot of our episodes, you know that we're primarily unschoolers. Um, and the difference is, in a nutshell, is that we don't have like, we're not curriculum based. Um, so and to give you the longer answer. So like, there are homeschoolers, right? And you think like your traditional homeschoolers, they have 
curriculum, like a set, like this is what we're doing. They probably get up at a set time and then they have to do math and then English and then and writing. They, they and literally then like school and then, at and home. And they school at home. Okay, so it's like, if you think of like a tiny itty bitty classroom in their home and they follow a set of curriculum. They, they most likely follow a very strict schedule as far as like what we're doing within the day. We're doing this work, then this work, then this work, then this work. And it's given to these kids, right? Bas- exactly of, like in it's school. Books. Except worksheets yep exactly know. like school except it's in their it's home and home. their parent is most likely their teacher so it's school at home what we do um i still consider it homeschooling like i tell people i homeschool i don't do that because that would drive me batshit bananas hate it so what we do um it's termed unschooling not sure i like that but it gives, i think it gives it like i a, like natural schooling natural schooling my kids decide what they want to learn and then that's what they do and for dea for example for my 15-year-old a couple years ago, she was super big into sewing and that's literally all she was doing. She was sewing Barbie costumes. She was sewing our animals shit. She was sewing so many different things. And, and to this day, she makes bunny toys and she made this elaborate bunny treat finder and she had all these different things and the stuck food into it. It's very... So just as an example, like... I'm never giving my, I'm not like, okay, go do this English, go do this math. Like we, now don't get me wrong, they do math and they do English and they do all the things, but it's very much like following what they're already interested in. And it's a very like child led. And it's also not just child led, but it for us and how I do it how we both do it, mm-hmm. is very much like life skills. Yes, and so like very much. They learn math by being in the kitchen and they make bread and they're like, they know what a quarter of a cup is, you know? It's just exactly. like, exactly, it's that's their math. <clears throat> they go into the garden and they are they know what seeds are what and how to plant this seed, how deep that should be, what that, you know, they know all these things that I think most kids really don't get that time to learn and, and it's very much and see in math then would like for example in the garden math would be math is involved in that you have science involved in that like there's so many things that definitely are involved con- constantly in every sub in everything that they are doing as long as we take the time and actually maybe point things out and maybe like you know, they're asking, oh, well, how many of these should I plant? How many could that bed hold? Everything's like a learning go opportunity. Go ahead, and, go ahead and let's go ahead and figure that out together. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, and once you switch exactly. your brain over, just like you switch your brain over to like home study stuff and like, yes. what can I make instead of buying? Yes. What can I do? I need to get away from these products. I want to make my own. I want to like whatever. So you, it's the same thing with unschooling or natural schooling, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's very much like everything is a learning opportunity if you want it to be if you want it to be and if you're and if you're if you're like centered like if you if you if you have it in the back of your head all the time too and like so one reason like home that's kind of homeschooling spoke to me originally like when with my boys like a long time ago was because a i hate control and b school fucking sucks and that's what it comes down to and i'm sorry if i offend Homework anyone is lame. but that's just my personal opinion and i just I have seen a lot of the time it just is can be quite devastating for kids and for absolutely no reason. You know, because all the shit they learn, it goes right in one ear. They take a test, it goes right out the other ear. Wait. I had a miserable time in school. Yeah, so did true. Shauna. My boys both had quite a miserable time in school when they were in school from like K through fourth and K through third. And yeah, that's what... And I absolutely, I would never change it for the world. It is I, absolutely I love the it. best and, thing. And probably because we don't make ourselves crazy by having to do curriculum and set things. Yeah. Like, I don't know how parents homeschool like that. I definitely. Well, see, and that's why I feel I, a lot of parents don't is because I feel like a lot of the time they don't feel equipped to do it. They don't feel like they can do it. And I, I can't tell but you there's how many other moms options. I've spoken to. There's other options. And that's what I tell them. I'm like, no, 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 no. But you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You can do whatever the fuck and you want to do. So I, d- and also with like the whole, like a lot of kids, their brains aren't ready to like read until the age of 10, but they are pushed to read at like five, um, very young. So my kids, you know, they, we, they were read too. Um, and my son picked up on reading a lot sooner than my daughter but it wasn't like it doesn't matter because just like people like our society very puts a lot of like um like oh if you're really good at math you're amazing you know in school and you're like you know 
whatever, or if you're really good at science or all these main subjects. But I tell my kids, like, if you're really good at fucking art, you're fucking amazing. Like, you know, it just builds their confidence on what they're good at. It doesn't matter that they're not excelling in this subject. Like, you can know the basics and you'll be fucking fine. Well, and and also the, the, the comparisons of, like, all these kids, and they want them, they're expected to be, like, all the exact, the same thing. They they have to know the exact same thing. They have to be learning the exact same thing. They have to be exactly the same pathway. You're like, what the fuck? That's not even reasonable. But these are all unique individuals. You know what I mean? And this one's good at math. This one's we good at... We can obviously talk a lot about this. I mean, I can honestly go on for days. For days. That's why we chose to unschool because I 100% believe in homeschooling, but I do, I'm do. i never going to school at home. Like, that's never, ever, Ugh. ever. I would just, yeah. So, yes. No, thank you. If you want to reach out, though, was that Jamie? Jamie yes. and talk more about, like, the unschooling. If or if any interested, of you want anybody to is hear more interested about in it. That, we can't even do more episodes on it. Yes. I think we've done one, right? Yeah, we did one um, way back in the day. Or you could go, yeah, a long time ago. Anyways, let us know if you want us, if you want to hear more about that. We obviously can talk forever about it because we just did. But we can talk a lot more because that we're very passionate about yes, very very passionate how we school our children. Yes, and we want and just giving them a life where they it can be enjoyable and they can feel like children too. Yeah, they can actually have a childhood. Yeah. You know. So, um, because you only get that for eighteen fucking years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Grab all that fucker and don't let go. All right. Okay, last question. So good thing we only had six questions. We were like complaining to you guys, but this is working mm-hmm. out. Everyone's so, like, see, we knew you'd do this. This is why we all got together and sent in yeah, five questions. Yeah, we only sent in you a guys few questions. Are so last question is from Lorraine. Um, and she said, why choose to homestead if you're a vegan? I literally almost said that thought that said virgin. I was like, I mean, <laughs> I mean that really like, I matters, Lorraine. Kids, Lorraine. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, Lorraine, thank you for your question. <laughs> um, I think that we confuse a lot of people most of the time with basically who we are and how we run our lives um in all aspects so uh, (laughs) right yeah 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 but so being so i'm we're we don't consider ourselves like vegan vegans we say what do we call it uh sustainable vegans yes um because we still eat our eggs that we get from our chickens we drink our goat milk or make when we make our cheese we just don't eat or drink it from outside sources because we know that the animals were not cared for how we care for our animals and we we're very much against animal cruelty um and why we choose to homestead is because it we we know that there's a better way to do things than how a lot of the meat industry the dairy industry runs things um i know that i can never eat meat just personally i i can't kill things we have friends that have ranches that do we're not trying to talk shit to anybody you very much can live your life it's just for us both sherry and i are strongly are against like harming animals at all even at our own hands so our chickens have very good lives we very much love our chickens they all have fucking names the our goats again very good lives like we don't rip babies away from moms we don't you know we very much take care of them we you know we appreciate they get lots of love and oats and everything else so um i guess it's just you know a lifestyle definitely choice but we know that it is the best like version of what we can give like our kids for what they're like the world instead of like what everybody else is offering yeah and like i feel like um you can homestead and be a vegan slash vegetarian or whatever like you can it's not like maybe I don't we're know. doing it we're doing it and it's not you know it's like I mean I don't have to eat meat to be able to be considered a homesteader at all obviously and so I just don't kill animals but I do a lot of other very much what is considered like homesteady things you know so that, I'm not there's sure. that, like that's just like the whole processing animals is only one facet of homesteading. Yeah, just yes, like gardening, exactly. just like um, anything else in homesteading. It's exactly. just like one. And so having all these different skill sets is some people they homestead because um, I a, a big portion of homesteaders they homestead because they are almost like worried that if something happened in the world they would want to be self-sufficient so they don't have to rely on like outside sources and so they the the processing animals is very important to them because they're like i want to feed my family or whatever the fuck or they live off grid or 
whatever. They don't want to, they need some source of protein. Right, um, right. Protein can come from a lot of things, by the way, including vegetables, just FYI. It's like spinach. Um, so we just look at things a lot differently. We're not in home, we're not homesteaders technically because we're prepping for the end of the world. Not that preppers prep for the end. I'm not trying to talk shit. I know it kind of sounded no, like no, I was, it, no, no, it I, didn't, it didn't. I, I get it because we're not. Much, we just we're just, we just homestead because I think it's a healthier lifestyle for me and my kids and my and our the whole world. family <laughs> and the world in general. Just more and sustainable. I truly enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. being with my animals. I enjoy gardening, and I enjoy like all the baking aspects. And I mean, I just enjoy it all. Like that's just that's just my skill sets, you know. So yeah, I, it is, definitely has to speak to you if you. Like, homesteading's not a thing to get into if you're like, well, that sounds like it sucks. I'm going to give it a try. Um, you know, you're. it's just, it definitely has to be something that's kind of, like, in you that you're like, this is definitely, and without, like, a lot of times, I think, and especially lately during COVID, I think it kind of got, like, the romanticized by, like, the slower life. Right, and, right, like, right. Like, it's yeah. slower by, because, like, things are actually slower. Like, you, everything takes a lot longer. I like, was like, like, actually slow. Like, like actually monotonously <laughs> slow. slow. Yeah. Like, but, like, but you it's know. not slower in the sense of you don't have anything to do. Like, fuck yeah. that. No fucking way. Yeah, it's way. not like we're just kicking back on no, our porch, sipping no, tea. Like, no. that sounds amazing. There's always, and the thing is, with homesteading, you just basically just do every, every day. You're like, okay, what is the most important thing to do What's today? on the docket? What's on the docket? I mean, beyond just keeping everyone alive and children and animals included, yeah. what else is it's the most important busy, today? Oh, okay, watering than, my garden and what else? It's yeah. like, it just goes down from there. So it's like, it's never nothing to do. That's for sure. That's why Never I think nothing. That's it's why. Nothing. We're going to get shirts. This is why I am so, ex- another reason I'm so excited to go away. Can you imagine seven days of turn doing our nothing? brains off. Bing. I mean, I'm going to be able to turn my brain off. I think after the third day, we're going to be very, very bored. No, we're not. <laughs> what are you fucking talking about, Shauna? Uh, bored sure. yeah shauna no we are mother's children we love to be busy this is why we chose no. this lifestyle not just that we chose this lifestyle but no. how, why we homeschool and why our kids are in a thousand no. things and no. why we're like oh you're we, gonna today you're gonna we have like, to make bread we're gonna make red beans and rice from scratch we're also gonna take our kids here we're gonna do five podcasts and we're gonna garden we're like this is the, like literally all in a day i know i know That's, but i'm just saying we, this it'll be a nice break we're not we gonna be bored We'll be refreshed. Anyway, refreshed. We'll come back refreshed. That's right. Giving you even better episodes. Um. Anyway, so thank you. You know, it'd be funny if we will if whether or not we're gonna come back and start the podcast being like, so we're tired. <laughs> <laughs> we should. <laughs> um. Thank you, everyone who wrote in questions. We yes, really appreciate thank you. you so much. Um. If Absolutely anybody wonderful. out there has another question, we might not shout you out on an episode or whatever but if you have a topic or anything you can always feel free if you want us to talk more about something that we touched on today please let yes. us know we can't read your minds so if there's something you want us to do more of you have to shame tell us. on us um that's my husband my husband's certain i can read his mind i know fucking husband so man. weird right um other than that our shout outs to our top patrons over on patreon um Lexi, Tegan, and Megan. And our mom, Tammy. We didn't shout you out in the last one. Sorry, mom. Yes. We love you. We love all of our patrons, but they really keep this podcast running and our other one running because um, that's just how we get a little bit of income to kind of keep this thing going. So if you would like to help out, we would appreciate it. Yes. Um, Go check out our Patreon. It's um, patreon.com backslash porch talks, or you can just look up, uh, once you're on, uh, on Patreon, you can do porch talks with our kind of home setting and we just have fun we talk shit and um yeah we just have a good time so yeah, it's a really and it's good three time. bucks a month so it's not bad and at you all get for two episodes, two episodes for three dollars a month that's amazing so other than that we will talk to you next time that's right bye guys Goodbye.